Since its February 1, 2021, Ku Burma's military junta has waged a campaign of terror on its citizens. People in ethnic regions have been bombed from their homes by aerial strike and ground artillery. The military made it clear in the aftermath of its 2021 coup that it ruled with an iron fist. Its troops roamed the street using live ammunition on people opposed to the coup, shooting protesters, including children. Independent media outlets were closed down. Dozens of people, doctors, nurses, teachers, workers, students, were hunted down for opposing the military dictatorship. The Assistance Association for Political Prisoners confirmed as of March 29 this year, 1,719 people were killed, 9,984 people were held in detention, and another 1,974 have been issued arrest warrants. The UN Agency for Refugees estimated the number of displaced people has more than doubled since the military coup, with as many as 500,000 people displaced, burnt or bombed from their homes. Thousands of young activists dismayed by the military's brutality joined People's Defense Force militias to fight back. Many operate in cities and large towns and have formed alliances with some ethnic armed groups. The danger of PDFs and EAOs forming a united front has forced the military to use a range of strategies to combat the threat. They have used helicopter gunships and jets to bomb ethnic villages and offer inducements to some ethnic leaders. Burma's unelected military junta met with representatives of some of the smaller ethnic armed organizations in Nebido in an attempt to reinstate its failed national ceasefire agreement. The Junta's Ministry of Information confirmed in a statement its National Solidarity and Peacemaking Negotiate Committee met informally with some ethnic armed organizations at the National Reconciliation and Peace Center in Nebido on Tuesday, 29 March 2022. Members of five out of the more than 20 ethnic armed organizations who met with the NSPNC Chair Lieutenant General Yarpie were the Arakan Liberation Party, DKBA, KNU or KNL APC, PNLO, and RCSS. Former Korean National Union Chairman David Dagapo told journalist Phil Thornton in a recent interview for Korean News, it was critical for the future of the country for ethnic armed organizations to stay united and not be tricked by inducements or promises of personal gain made by the military. It's just a Burmese military, divide and rule, a kind of divide and conquer. They stop in one area, they fight in another area because they don't have enough uh, military power uh, even to, to beat one big group. They see so in the north and uh, they mass their troops against the KNU and fought for 17 years. And at the same time, of course, they managed to dig up a lot of uh, jade selling to China or other countries worth the billions and billions of dollars supposed to be. Now, later, when we call for a nationwide ceasefire, we want everyone, you know, to participate in this dialogue. He, he made ceasefire quickly with, with the southern, let us say, southern group, the Karen. And uh, they resume a uh, fight against the Kachin and uh, Kogan, of course. The same strategy. And then now they, they stop their operation against the Arakan. It's most likely that they are going to launch a big offensive against the Karen because they want to mass troops against the Karen and the Kachin. <laughs> CDM, good. There's one way, uh, just a way of uh, overthrowing the military dictatorship. Support the, these people uprising.
because uh, it's for democracy. CDM people, you have to fight. Don't give up for federalism also, not only for democracy. We have to hold hands together. And now that the Burman people know that they are not a super majority people and they, uh, they shouldn't have this uh, chauvinism or ultra nationalism. If no support to the military by the Russia, China, US, British, Germany, Japan, we easily win it. Even if the support by China and Russia, the ethnics and the uprising CDM uh, must get uh, support from the West. <laughs>